Please welcome a member of parliament from the Republic of Finland, Paivi Vasanen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here with you today. I have been a member of Finnish parliament for 27 years, and I'm also a former government minister of interior and a medical doctor. For all my long career as an MP, I have been open about my Christian faith, but the last couple of years have been surprising. In 2021, the Prosecutor General of Finland brought three separate charges against me, and I have been in the Helsinki District Court twice this year. The starting point of this process was a tweet that I published in June 2019. In that tweet, I questioned the Evangelical Lutheran Church's support to LGBT pride event and accompanied my post with a photo of a Bible passage from the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 24 to 27, where Apostle Paul teaches about the same-sex relationships. And I had a deep concern about my church teaching against its own confession and that this would undermine people's trust on God's word. The second charge is about an old pamphlet I have written already 2004, male and female, he created them. And then the third charge is about my views presented in a radio interview. The possible sentence for the crime of agitation would be up to two, two years jail or a fine. In the Finnish law, it belongs to a serious category of war crimes and crimes against humanity. But even more dangerous problem would be the resulting censorship. And that would open the floodgates to a ban on similar publications, even Bibles. The filing of the charges was preceded by one and a half years of police investigation and several long police interrogations that mainly focused on theological issues about the Bible. And the situation felt absurd, even unreal. Just a few years ago, I was in charge of the police as a minister of interior, and then I was sitting in the police station interrogated, having the Bible on the table. In the police interrogations, hearings, the police asked if I agree to delete within two weeks my writings. I answered no, I will stand behind these teachings of the Bible, whatever the consequences are. In the trial last January, the prosecutor at first assured that the trial would not be an inquisition around the Bible, but then she surprisingly targeted the core doctrine of Christianity. She claimed that my views are known as a doctrine which, which she defined and summarized as love the sinner, hate the sin. And this doctrine she regarded as insulting and defaming in itself because according to her, you cannot make a distinction between the person's identity and his action. If you condemn the act, you also condemn the human being and regard the inferior. And this is an egregious statement. It goes against the Christian view of man and common sense. I think that the prosecutor tries to deny the core message of the Bible, the teaching of law and gospel. God has created all human beings as his own image, and we all have equal value, but we all are also sinners. No one's human dignity decreases because of sin. God so loved all the people that he gave his only son to die on the cross to suffer the punishment that belonged to us because of our sins. In court, I appealed to the Constitution of Finland and to international conventions that guarantee 
freedom of speech and religion, the points of view for which I'm accused do not deviate from so-called classical Christianity. And throughout this whole process, what has been most distressing is the prosecution's false testimony about my statements. On the end of March, the Helsinki District Court acquitted me of all the, all the three charges. In its unanimous ruling, the court uh, stated with regard to several allegations placed into my mouth by the prosecution that no such statements were to be found in my texts. But now, the Helsinki Court of Appeals has granted the prosecutors permission to proceed in this Bible trials case, as media has called it in Finland. For me, the victory we achieved in the district court would have been adequate, but the acquittals of the higher courts have a broader significance. The extension of the trial will allow the establishment of legal precedent on freedom of expression and religion from even a higher court. And this would serve as a legal guide regarding any similar charges in the future. For my part, I'm prepared to defend freedom of expression and religion at all necessary levels of justice, even if necessary before the European Court of Human Rights. I feel privileged to have this calling and honor to defend the foundational rights and everlasting biblical values. I trust that the entire process is in God's hands and that this all has a purpose. I'm also glad that the discussion about the Bible is still going on and I pray that this process would still open many chances to testify about Jesus and the message of the gospel in public. There were several live broadcasts from the courthouse and press conferences to Finnish homes, and I had many chances to tell what is the solution to the problem of sin in the word of God. I have been so glad about the thousands of messages I have received from Finland and abroad in which people have told her how God has, through this case, encouraged them to pray and trust God's word. And I'm also happy for those who have told that they have found Jesus in their life through this process. The high international interest in this case rises from the concern that if this kind of questioning of free speech is possible in a country like Finland, which has a good reputation regarding free speech internationally, the same is possible anywhere. Prosecutor claimed in court that Rasanen can believe certain things in her own mind, but she cannot express her faith in this way. And I encountered this same kind of limited understanding when I was the minister responsible for church affairs and had a discussion with the Chinese minister in charge of religious matters. He said that in China, you can believe in your mi mind whatever, but it is necessary to restrict uh, the freedom to express your faith if it increases tensions in the society. In public, the prosecutor general has stated that although Razanen was convicted, it doesn't mean that Bible should be removed uh, from the libraries. You can refer to Bible, Koran, or Mein Kampf, because it is uh, uh, not forbidden to discuss about historical texts, but what is essential is that do you agree with it? The early Christians didn't renounce their faith in Lyon's case. Why should we then renounce our faith in the challenges of this time? If we do not now use our right to speak freely, the space to use our rights will eventually diminish. Finally, I want to express my deep gratitude for all the wonderful 
support and prayers I have received from so many people from abroad and also from United States, including both ordinary citizens and also members of the US Congress. So I wish you all courage, wisdom, and blessings. Thank you.